Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about fighting against a spear or a polearm with sword and shield or sword and buckler. Okay. Uh, now before we talk about using the sword and shield or sword and buckler, we need to talk about uh, using these range weapons, right? Using the spear or the polearm. Uh, throughout the video I'm going to focus mostly on the spear because the spear typically is longer. Um, in the thrust, the spear is, is, is faster, all right? You know, it can go low, high, you know, it can, you, know you can move that tip back and forth really quickly uh, because the, the tip is light. Um, so, so we're going to focus more on the spear, but a lot of what I say will also apply to the polearm. It's just the polearm is going to move a little bit slower, it's going to be a little bit shorter, okay? Um, so the first thing we got to understand is the optimal range of the spear, okay? So here I got a pole that's that's about 10 feet long, okay, um, and I want you to pay attention to these two uprights here. These uprights here are about two and a half feet apart, okay, and I also want you to look at my tip here, okay. Now I'm going to stand all the way back here, okay, with my arms back, all right, I'm going to start the tip at the first upright and I'm going to extend. So what you see is regardless how long my pole is, it can only move forward about two and a half feet, three feet if I have really long arms. If I do it with a step forward, I can double it. Okay, I can go to five feet, maybe six feet if I'm really long. Okay, if I got really long legs and long arms. Okay, All right, so with a step forward, I'm going to be somewhere between five feet and six feet. Okay, so that's important. We got to know where the optimal range of, of the spear is. Um, That's really no different from having a, a, a sword, right? If I stand closer in, right, if you look at my tip here, if I stand here in the fluke and I extend my point, it's only going to cover about two and a half feet. If I do it with a step forward, you know, same deal. I can only cover somewhere between five and six feet. So, how, you know, so it doesn't make a difference how long the weapon is, whether it's, it's, it's three feet long or, or 10 feet long or 20 feet long, that tip can only move back and forth about six feet max, okay? Um, so this is gonna play, this is gonna be uh, really important in our strategy against the spear or the polearm, okay? Let me put this down for a second. Now, the other thing to be aware of, before, before we move on, you know, when I'm at my max range, right? You can see I can hit the post here. I cannot hit down there. So here I can hit the head, I cannot hit the legs, right? right? This is something that's going to be familiar to all of you, okay? Same exact thing with the spear. When I'm at my max range, all right, and fully extended, right, I'm fully extended, I can thrust the face there. I cannot reach the legs down here, okay? So I'm, I cannot reach, I can reach head. I cannot reach legs, okay? So, again, it doesn't make a difference how long the weapon itself is. The geometry is still the same. The distance going across is always going to be shorter than the distance diagonally. So again, this is also an important factor, and we're going to use this in our strategy um, in fighting against spears and pole arms. Okay? Um, let me get a shield now. All right, so what I have here is a spear or a polearm that's fully extended, okay? And basically, the polearm man is going to stand with his spear or pole, you know, spear retracted, right? He's retracted so that he can thrust forward, okay? So I'm aware that from that tip, he can only thrust that tip forward somewhere between five and six feet, and we'll say six feet, you know, just to be on the safe side. So what I want to do with my shield is I want to stand at the edge of his range, about six feet back, because here I know that you know the only area that he can really target is, is my chest and head. He cannot reach my legs because of the angle that I explained earlier. Okay, So I know that he's going to target my head. Now, he might step forward a little bit, in which case I can step back a little bit. Um, also, you know, I, I can also bait him. You know, I can move around a little bit to try and 
confuse him as to far as what his distance is. Okay, what I'm trying to do is I need him to thrust me. I need him to thrust into my shield. Ideally, I want to place myself at a place where, at when he fully extends, all he can do is hit my shield. He can't hit me, right? Because remember, if I, especially if I'm holding my shield out like this, right? If I have my shield out, there's almost two feet between my shield and my body, okay? And I can cheat that, you know, I can, I can use all sorts of trickery. I mean, I might start off, you know, with holding the shield really close like this, right? And then do something like that, because remember, he's nine feet back, and if he's got a longer spear, he might be 15 feet back. So if I, if I you know, if, if I come in like this, and then as I'm moving around at some point, step back, you know, I can position myself where all he can hit is the face of the shield, and he can't hit my body. So these are all forms of trickery that I'm going to use against him to get him to extend. I need him to extend. Because what's going to happen is, you know, I'm just going to go back and forth a couple times as I'm testing the range. At some point, I'm going to get him to commit to a strong uh, thrust, a strong extension. And what's going to happen is, what I want to do is, as soon as he extends, while he's retracting, okay, I'm going to close in on him, okay, and I'm going to close in hard and fast. So as he extends, I'm going to come in, and, and once I get in here, I'm going to go to town on this guy. Up, down, okay, I'm going to attack him relentlessly. And I don't just want to put the face of my shield on his weapon. I actually want to get it on his hands. Let me put this down for a second. On any two-handed weapon, right, where you hold it with two hands, if you take a shield, a large shield like that, and you press it against their hands, they, they cannot move this, okay? And basically what you want to do with the shield is play sticky fingers. Okay, you want to keep pressure, okay, or what Lich now you know, refers to as, as feeling, keep pressure on the hilt so that they can't get a shot off, or even if they do get a shot off, it's not going to have much power. Right, keep pressure on their hands. Um, and now here's the thing: as a shieldman, right, you have a disconnected offense defense, which means your shield can be doing one thing, which is basically stuffing their weapon, while your sword is on the offense. You can attack and defend at the same time. So while I am uh, pressing in the shield. While I am pressing in and controlling that weapon, I am attacking low high. Okay? Now, what you know, and continuously until he's dead or until he yields. Okay. Um, you know, now obviously in a sparring match, I mean, basically the first hit. You know, I mean, I don't know if you guys are doing like counted blows. You know, um, you know where where three hits is a kill um, or whatever you're doing. But the point is, you're going to keep doing that until he has been defeated. Okay, regardless of what. Um, you know what your uh, situation is. You know if, if it's a single, you know one 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 hit is a kill, or three hits is a kill, or whether it's a real life battle where you actually have to kill him. Whatever it is, you keep fighting that person until he's defeated. Okay. Now let's talk about what he's gonna do. Okay. Once you know, once you start moving in on him, okay. Um, the 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 the, uh, the spearman or the pole arm man, whatever, he's gonna obviously pull. He's gonna try and shorten his weapon up, right? He's gonna pull his tip back, um, and he's also gonna try and move back uh, to 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 um, maintain distance. Which is why you know the biggest mistake that you can make against fighting a um, a, a spearman or a pole arm, okay, is is not closing in all the way. Okay, a lot of times I watch people fighting, all right. And once they, they get their opportunity, right, they move in, they come here, they stop here, and they try to get that attack. And yes, sometimes they land it, okay, because they're, basically what they're doing is they're attacking at the very edge of the range, where they're basically attacking uh, with the tip of the sword. But here's the thing, if you miss, or if he blocks it, right, if he lifts his hilt up, you know, and he blocks it, um, you know, he, and, and he gains distance, he's now going to basically, you know, go back to trying to kill you. When you have the opportunity to close in, get in all the way, 
okay? There's nothing to prevent you from continually striking as you move in. So there's absolutely no reason not to get in there and completely stuff his weapon. You need to, you need to um, completely uh, neutralize that weapon so that even if he pulls it back or if he steps back, um, he cannot use it. Now, if he's an experienced uh, shield man or polar man, they're not just going to back up straight. They're going to back up diagonally or they're going to try to back up in a circle. And what you're going to do is you're going to stay on him. Okay. Um, once you make contact with your shield on, on his on his hands, okay. Uh, basically, you can feel the pressure. Okay. If you feel that you're losing pressure, basically that means you need to you know move forward. If you see that that pressure is starting to push back on your shield, it means he might be trying to push you back. Okay. And which means you got you you need to give. And again, no matter what you're doing, you're continually attacking. You don't stop attacking. You know, you're scuffing his weapon while continually attacking until he's defeated. Now, uh, you might tell me something like, well, what if he drops the, the, the spear and goes for a dagger? Well, it, it all comes back to fencing times. While he's, while he's dropping his main weapon and trying to pull his dagger or sword out, um, you, you, are, you are using that fencing time to continue to strike him. Okay? And you're gonna strike him uh, in very sensitive areas like his face, okay? So, 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 you know, there's a lot of stuff that he can do, but while he's doing that stuff, you're doing other stuff too. You are killing him, and you have the advantage because you have a big shield and you have a weapon, um, whereas you know for a fact that he does not have a shield. So no matter what he pulls out, uh, you're going to have an advantage because you have the shield, okay? So, so um, what I want to do now is I want to talk a little bit about the buckler, okay? Let's say we don't have a big shield. Let's say we have a buckler. Now, with the buckler, obviously, we're at a slight disadvantage, okay? Um, but the principle of, of distance applies here. I want to stay at that six-foot area, right? Um, and basically, I want to be put myself in the position where all he can really reach is my sword or my buckler. I don't want him to be able uh, to reach my body. Now, obviously, there's going to be some movement around. He's going to be moving. I'm going to be moving. So, so, so we're, all, we're all playing for range here. We're all trying to trick each other. Uh, to get you know to get ourselves in that optimal range at some point he's going to thrust forward okay when he thrusts forward okay uh, you know as soon as you get that as soon as you get his pole arm on your sword okay what you're going to do is you're going to run it up maintain control get your hilt on that pole arm and then you're going to wind up and thrust straight into his face and you keep your buckler here for, for added, added control okay so 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 this you know, with sword and buckler, we use we make a lot more use of windings than we do with the, um, with the full size shield. Because with the full size shield, you know, we are free to keep the shield in front of us and and attack in all sorts of different different directions. Okay, um, with the sword and buckler, we're a little bit more hesitant uh, about about coming off his weapon because if we cut him off his weapon, if we free his weapon up, he might use it against us. So that's why with, with the sword and buckler. You know, as soon as he extends and we catch that on our blade, we're going to immediately close, wind, get that thrust in, okay? If that doesn't work, if he ducks it, then basically we can take control of this weapon and, you know, we can basically, you know, thrust and, 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 and fight him from there. But we need to control that weapon before, before we take our sword off that weapon, okay? Um, so, so that, that's the main difference with fighting this with a, with a sword and buckler. But it's the same idea. When I'm out here, if I'm six feet away from him, okay, the only area that he can really thrust is my face and chest area. Okay? And I have that cone of defense you know, where, where I'm basically I'm, 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 you know, I'm pretty well guarded. And again, I want to be in a position where, where you know, he can hit my buckler and my sword. But he, I want to stay enough out of range so that he really can't get past my hilt. So that when he's at full extension, he, he can't even reach my hand. Okay. So at that point, once he gets that deep, I can, I can, I can try and control his weapon uh, with my sword and move in on him. And again, when you move in, you go all the way in. You don't go halfway in. Um, you know, even, even if you are capable of killing him at medium range, you know, yeah, absolutely. As you're moving in, you know, let's say you got a full size shield. 
as you move in, you take that shot, but continue moving in. Get all the way up there um, and, and, and stuff that weapon because what you think is a, a, a successful hit at the mid-range, right? So let's say I, let's say I, I move in. All right, let me go back to the shield. So he, he thrusts, he goes to full extension. Okay, I move in, stuff his weapon. On the way in, I get a hit here, okay? Um, but basically, there's no re you know, even though I have a hit, the fight is not necessarily over. Come in, take the thrust, take the leg, come back to the head until you are absolutely sure that he has been defeated. Keep fighting him, okay? You don't want to let him back off because if he backs off and creates space, now the advantage is back to him. You know his his advantage is at, is in keeping you at distance. Your advantage is getting in really close and stuffing that weapon. Now there's one more thing I want to talk to you guys in terms of fighting pole arms and uh, spears. When you get in close, okay. Um, as you close in, this, this the pole arm or the spear is then going to, you know, he, the, the spearman is going to transition from trying to use this as an offensive weapon to using this as a defensive weapon, okay? So he's going to try and use this to block those incoming shots. He, he might choke back on this, try to shorten that tip up a little bit. But mind you, he's got this huge tail out there now that's going to be hitting stuff and getting in the way. So this is, you know, he, this is not the best place for him to be, okay? Um... So especially if you're able to, if you have a big shield, you can still block this like, like you would any sword or any, any, or any dagger. You can still block this. Um, you, know, you can still control this. So you still have the advantage if you're, you're in close. So he's going to try and shorten this. He's going to try and use this uh, defensively. Okay? While he's doing that, right, the, you know, you, you're going to be playing the four quadrants, okay? attacking all the four quadrants. But the thing to be aware of is that... If he's holding, let's say he's holding this diagonally, right? You want to attack in the same plane that the, that the weapon is being held. So if he's holding this diagonally, my shots are going to come in diagonally, okay? They're going to come in diagonally, okay? If he's holding this vertically, then my shots are going to come in vertically. Now, naturally, if I'm throwing my shots in vertically, he's going to move this horizontal to try and block my vertical shot. At that point, all my shots come in horizontally okay so however this weapon is 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 oriented i'm attacking in the same plane as the weapon what i don't want to do is try and attack into the weapon um i can't try and get around it you know like that uh and, and that has a purpose in that it's gonna you know if i try to get around it he's gonna have to move this out to block it in which case from there i'm just gonna come back you know that'll create an opportunity for me to come back and take a vertical shot here um so, so there is a place for that, but ideally we want to be attacking in the same plane uh, as this weapon, okay? Um, so uh, that's all I got for you guys. If you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you're not a member, subscribe. Um, and by all means, I'd love to hear from you guys. I'd like to hear your feedback, your opinions on everything I've said. Uh, if you have some other ideas that perhaps I have not considered, uh, please post them. Um, and if you're not a member of the channel, please subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.